So my name is Saurav Pandey. I scored All India Rank 66 in the CSC exam 2019. My optional subject was Geography. And this is a pretty long journey that I have had, six attempts in UPSC exam. Uh, finally, I have uh, qualified in the final attempt, my sixth attempt, which was in 2019. Uh, my graduation was in BTEC. It was BE actually. Uh, in electrical and electronics engineering, which will learn. And I have worked for two years in Cypress Semiconductor, about two years in Cypress Semiconductor, 2013 to March 2015. So that was some work experience I've had. So what I'll talk today is, uh, it will revolve around these four points. I'll share some resources and booklets that I follow. Uh, revision strategy that I used before, just before exams and what should be planned for beginners and success mantra i think which is more or less what you have been hearing about uh, in every talk that people give but yes we have to reinforce some important points so let's let's start for mains uh, in gs1 uh, i have used themes in indian history one two three all these are all new volumes a lot of people do old volumes also i have also referred them you can refer to uh, uh, old NCRTs also. But I think uh, these days, it is uh, the new NCRTs are relevant enough. You can uh, do them well and attempt the exam. For world history, I used Vision Eyes booklet uh, and uh, their notes. Uh, I think that was enough. And the world history questions are not that uh, difficult these days. And it is very hard to predict what they are going to ask. So perhaps you can see last few years question papers also and then read these booklets so that you have proper direction and it is not very vague and uh, you have some accuracy in how you prepare. GSN also has this uh, art and culture. Uh, so I have uh, read main portions of CCRT India website. And in this uh, Nitin Singhania's book is also largely derived from that website. Uh, you can refer to this also. This is very easy to read. It has, it is already highlighted. It has good uh, pictures, etc., and some uh, short MCQs, previous year questions. So this would be a good, uh, uh, good, uh, good revision tool also for art and culture. And of course, you cannot, you do cannot skip NCRT. So Introduction to Indian Art is a very good NCRT. You should also read that. So this is mainly, uh, I think, more or less. Uh, history can be covered in this. Yes, I forgot to mention Spectrum. Spectrum uh, Modern India History. Is, it has, over the years, it has become a bulky book, but it is, I think uh, you can, it is mandatory. You have to read it. And it covers a lot of, uh, it covers portions from a lot of different books also. So you can find a lot of things in one place. So that is something very good about Spectrum. So Spectrum is a must. For geography, um, because geography was my optional, so I had, uh, it was uh, very easy for me to revise general studies geography. But for geography, uh, non-geography optional students, this is uh, the basic which you have to read. G.C. Leong, uh, and these are, these are the four NCRTs, Fundamentals of Human, Physical, India Physical Environment, India People and Economy. And of course, you have to refer to Atlas, or you can Google Maps, and you can Google every location which you find in Google Maps. And uh, you should have pretty good idea of where uh, places are because most uh, prelims questions are also based on locations these days. So you have to do that. Other thing in uh, GS1 is uh, urbanization, society, demography, uh, social, family, etc. They have been asking good questions on that. So one book is Indian Society. This is again in CRT. And there is another book called uh, Social Change and Development in India, which is not mentioned here, but uh, that is also a really, really good book. And apart from that, the current affairs based issues you have to be taken note of. Uh, you can easily add some concepts in that. For GS2, I think uh, everybody knows Lakshmi Kant is the go to book for uh, constitution and polity. The basic NCRT for this is Indian Constitution at Work. I think this is class 11th NCRT. And then current affairs is very important. You can refer to current affairs monthly magazines, uh, whichever you are using. I have used Vision Eyes for almost everything, I think. 
so it's uh, this is the basic which will help you in prelims uh, mainly uh, for mains you, this uh, will sometimes some for some issues uh, this will not suffice you will have to look into uh, issues deeply you will have to read indian express uh, other uh, sources there is, there is the print also puts out some good articles uh, so you can refer those if you stick to one newspaper at least you will be aware of all the governance issues going on and then you can uh, analyze with different kinds of arguments etc and you can prepare accordingly then we have social justice uh, for this uh, i think uh, for this the a good strategy is how vision is uh, notes were organized they were based on different vulnerable sections like old age uh, women uh, lgbt sections uh, disabled uh, divyang gen divyang population uh, similarly you can target issues based on such vulnerable sections and prepare what government is doing what are the main issues what is the law which has come and uh, what are the flaws in that law and what can be possible solutions so if you divide social justice based on different vulnerable sections of society it will be very easy to prepare and understand also for international relations i think uh, there are a lot of basic books which you can read but current affairs based uh, preparation is always useful because uh, you get to know the latest updates also and uh, uh, a bit of a history you should always google what's happening and what was the reason for any geopolitical conflict or any geopolitical issue with sector any regional problem or be it central asia west asia or, or anything you can always go back and read using internet what is the main issue because yeah it is not since it is not if it is not your optional subject then you will have to do it this way otherwise there are many books on ir which people read but i will suggest you stick to the syllabus and prepare accordingly uh also uh, international relations is an extension of world history so if you have read world history from here in gs1 you can relate to a lot of things from world history also uh let's move to gs3 now uh it is mainly indian economy uh, there is in mains there is not much focus on economics as such as a subject uh, they can ask some basic questions sometimes but uh, you have to focus on economic development issues mainly i have used shriram notes class notes which were available in rajendranagar ronal is a very good source people refer to it also and i have also watched his videos a lot uh you can also get minimum renal's notes uh, class notes in uh, market or online somewhere or you can subscribe to his courses also that's that's the choice you will have to take individually but these two sources i i found that they are very useful for environment uh, shankar ayer's book on environment is read by one and all everybody refers to that book some people also refer to icsc class 9 to 12 uh, environment books so that is also one good source but a lot of it will again come down to current affairs and uh, uh, if there are policies you can go back trace its history trace the history of climate change trace the history of greenhouse gases trace the history of pollution water pollution air pollution uh, so you can divide these things into different sections for example climate is a separate issue uh, global warming is a separate issue then ocean acidification is one issue uh, similarly you can prepare and all of it has to be prepared from the point of view of phenomenon at itself and then the policies which have been taken and what is the issue going forward and how you are going to tackle it so uh, now the urbanization is one big problem in environment but you have to inevitably urbanize so that is similarly you have to divide it divide it into different kind of topics then you relate it to sustainable development goals etc so you have to build a whole picture and this book is i think uh, useful in doing that for science and technology i think a uh, lot of people do not have science background so they find it difficult but i my suggestion would be use current affairs trace uh, the basic concept in that the basic concept used in that for example if some someone reads that there is a nobel prize in gravitational wave then what is gravitational wave you can simply google and see what is the basic criteria what is the concept or you have you hear about neutron star white dwarf star uh, black holes etc you should google and understand it you, uh, because it otherwise cost benefit is really not in our favor in this topic because there you, you cannot give a lot of time in science and technology itself because there are there are five main topics in gs3 and uh, you have to prepare every topic 
disaster management is again i use these class notes you have to understand basic concepts what is disaster what is a hazard what is what do you mean by vulnerability what do you mean by risk what do you mean by capacity how these things are related what is the diet what is a disaster management cycle how do you prepare how do you how do you do relief work just after the strike happens the disaster happens what is the reform you do what is uh, for every stage you will have to see what the government does a bit of law uh, you have to know how state sdrf ndrf and district uh, administration manages it so if you focus on the syllabus if you focus on the functioning of disaster management it will be easier to prepare then you prepare different kinds of disasters also based on geography because uh, based on my experience with geography i can uh, tell you that you can prepare small maps like uh, what are the areas vulnerable to soil erosion what are the areas vulnerable to floods droughts uh, earthquakes and landslides similarly uh, other like cyclones coastal floods uh, these things you can prepare in every section you can have basic few points ready if they are asked in exam you can use them security also uh, you have to use basic concepts uh, what are the threats to security internal security specifically in left wing extremism what was the origin what was the problem which areas are affected what has government done uh, why is it not succeeding and has it succeeded so if it has succeeded where it has succeeded which districts are affected are there districts which are now being freed of naxalism and are there more districts being added to uh, this threat so you have to prepare uh, all those scenarios in security then you have to understand money laundering what is the nexus between crime uh, organized crime and uh, uh, terror Where, who finances whom is it is geography relevant is location is politics relevant is the uh, border issue is whether border issues is relevant for that Uh, how everything happens so there are a lot of articles which comes in newspaper which come in newspaper and you can relate all of them to syllabus topics so syllabus topics you should have handy you should have syllabus printed all the time with you and you can you should always read everything with that uh, syllabus in mind for gs4 uh, gs4 i think uh, a bit of reading and a lot of practice is required and a lot of things get added when you keep reading uh, online or newspaper etc so for basic concepts you can use lexicon for ethics uh, there is it's just for lexicon and the, all basic concepts are uh, pretty much covered in that and you can go through that once and then there is a website called better india which offers a lot of case studies what different administrators are doing uh, in uh, in and around country and you all you will get some ideas you will get uh, examples you will get a lot of examples so i think once you start referring to this website you might find other websites also which will help you in case studies do not get too much too lost in uh, internet just focus on your syllabus and prepare your topics if you have uh, examples etc ready made ready for every topic then you should stop and focus on practicing and practicing answer writing more and more so for all this uh, gs1 Uh, GS one, I think, uh, looks the most lengthy, the lengthiest, and then uh, for everything you have to prepare these books, but there is no end. So my suggestion would be once you do all the concepts, get to answer writing uh, when you can, and then refer to these books again and again based on your answers. Can you improve them? Can it be made more relevant? Are you writing things which are not being asked? So. gradually you have to understand that you have only 150 to 250 words in answers and you have to make the most out of it you have to write as accurate as possible for prelims i suggest uh, i can't suggest you any different books uh, there are, there are no different books the books are same just that when you practice mock papers uh, you get to revise them you get to memorize a lot of facts so it becomes a lot factual so once you practice uh, prelims test papers you can go back to these books again and revise these books based on those practice papers and then gradually the facts and figures and data and maps and locations etc also get memorized so prelims is more about that kind of practice that the books are same okay so my revision strategy was that uh, i i did not make running notes for a lot of things uh, but uh, i had marked i used to mark important things or take screenshots or highlight them in pdf uh, things like that and when the exam would be near i would arrange based on the syllabus topics i would see what all has come what all has happened what are the topics i would list them so that my revision notes are not lengthy 
because if you make running notes what i personally think is if you make running notes every day you add a lot of pages and in the end it becomes so bulky that you think that it, because i have made it it is very uh, very important and i'm not able to revise it so i we lose confidence in exam we think that we made notes and we have not prepared unnecessarily we get that stress also it is not very organized also but if you do it in the end you have every possible dimension which has happened in the past few months or one year that is there ready ready with you so i think that is a stronger uh, preparation strategy and i think a lot of people do that but it's very individual thing to do time table i would uh, suggest that you divide your day into two three blocks in morning you can you know, spend some time in newspaper then you can shift to gs or optional and in after late after afternoon you can switch to uh, optional or gs either of them so uh, dividing your day into three parts is important the newspaper reading should be short one hour or so in the beginners may take two hours but one it should not be more than 45 minutes to one hour because you just have to identify you, once you are very uh, well versed with the syllabus you will identify which articles are not at all relevant and you have to focus on relevant articles and do not worry about making notes all the time you read it understand it reflect it link to other issues what is happening is it real, uh, where are you going to use it have you read a similar topic so all those th thinking process has to go on in this then you do 2 3 hours of gs and 2 3 hours of op optional subject that you can do and based on what test you have in the weekend you can plan accordingly because you will have a lot of tests when as mains approach mains exam approaches so that is pretty much what you can do and uh, as and when you start doing all this you develop your own strategy also so uh, it is not very it is there is no hard and fast rule about these uh, strategies and timetables so uh, if you are an absolute beginner what you can do is a syllabus the syllabus is the very is the important document you should look at and there is syllabus for everything there is syllabus for interview also so uh, you go through that see what is what is the syllabus of the subjects you are considering to take as an optional and uh, have a look at the syllabus is it uh, something you are familiar with or is it too much for you can you look for some other option subject you can do that you go through the syllabus and if you are suppose let's say you are in uh, college you still have your graduation left so you should not compromise that you develop reading and writing habits you can start reading newspaper but then you have to see the syllabus so that you read whatever is relevant otherwise reading habit reading can go uh, any side any place and it it can actually you can spread yourself thin you do not have to do that so if you have a checked syllabus your reading habit it can be around that only otherwise you can read out of interest also but i as far as this exam is considered your reading habit and writing habit should if it is very much relevant relevant to the syllabus it will be better once you have time you can start reading ncrts uh, i think there is some mistake ready ncrt i mean uh, you can start reading ncrt of class 9 to 12 and since this will cover a lot of subjects you can perhaps start choosing your optional also if you have not chosen already if you have not uh, narrowed down to one you can choose based on that once you have an optional uh, which you like out of these readings you again go back to the syllabus and, and see if uh, both paper 1 and paper 2 all the sections etc you understand what it entails what you have to prepare uh, and study and how much time you have to give you can get a better idea so this is how you can start uh, looking for looking to enter into civil service exam preparation so okay so success mantra learning uh, there are more learnings there are more i have seen more failures uh, i have uh, i have screwed up all rounds at least once so uh, i can say that there is a lot of learning in this exam and you have to be really positive all the time it's okay if you have stress sometimes you can talk to your family you can talk to your friends you can work on some backups when you have time and uh, so that you are not really really stressed uh, only and only dependent on this one exam you should have a backup if you can but if you don't have anything in mind at that at a point you 
properly give this exam focus on it something should something will come up so don't uh, fret about it a lot that you do not have a backup but yes if there is keep an eye on keep an eye and uh, take it daily routine is very important because it is such a long process that you have to take one day at a time and you cannot get overwhelmed with, with what will happen at the end of a phase of uh, whether it is prelims or mains you should not be thinking about uh, you should not be thinking a lot about it you have to plan and you have to think in a sense that you have to plan for the last week of revision you have to plan for the last 10 days of revision you should plan uh, for the exam day what you are going to do uh, how you should be sleeping uh, and you, how you should be studying so that you are really fresh on the exam time it is advisable to be very active in the daytime for this exam because all the exam happens in the daytime and a lot of energy a lot of writing is required so you have to be you have to perform at your maximum potential so all those things you can you should plan but otherwise uh, speculating about your future worrying about your future those things is better avoided take one day at a time work hard uh, make sure your day is efficient and whatever things waste your time are gradually cut out from your day talk to your friends share your thoughts with your close friends your family find out new solutions if you have a problem in your study if you have an inefficiency in your timetable discuss it out plan it out uh it will be fine social media is useless uh, people get selected and we post photos uh, it's not going to help you uh, everybody uh, uh, when they are selected they are happy they are enjoying they share pics with their fa friends families followers but that's not for you if you are a serious aspirant you go back to your books the the social, the instagram post if it inspires you uh, the facebook post some tweet if it inspires you, then well and good. But if you're spending 30 minutes, one hour on these things, it's not at all advisable. You are not going to get any good advice by spending time, the spending so much time on social media. Yes, and uh, because it's a long process, there are so many factors, so many factors that you just cannot list them out. It is the only thing you can control is what is your uh, weakness, what you can do better in any stage of exam. So I'm not saying that it will always be your be your mistake that uh, things go bad because there are a lot of factors. But the only thing you can we can control in this exam is what we do, how we react to those results or those questions, those uh, timetables, etc. So there is no use uh, blaming anything at in especially during the exam process. There is no use to indulge in those negative uh, discussions that. Uh, it was this person's fault or that system's fault. So try to focus on your uh, strength, your weaknesses, and uh, keep moving towards your strengths. And do not give up. It's a good, it's a difficult exam. Uh, only few people get selected. So it is highly probable. It is uh, actually uh, a lot of luck factor is there. And if you keep trying, um, definitely something will happen. Something big will happen. Something good will happen. So do not give up. Keep working. All the best.